Holy Land has once again upgraded one of their Mars series wireless systems, and this time we've got the top end Mars 400 Pro. So let's get into it. Hey, what's up? I'm Scott and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, make sure that you subscribe for more no-nonsense tutorials and reviews. So the Mars 400 and 400S, which I have one of here, were already really great and capable wireless systems with a professional build quality and connections. As with the rest of the Mars lineup, you didn't get latency-free transmission like with their Cosmo line, but with each new release, Hollyland has been improving that little by little. And now you get a slight step up in latency performance from 0.1 seconds with the 400 and 400S to 0.08 seconds with the new 400 Pro. Another new feature that the new 400 Pro now picks up is the channel scan and firmware update feature through the mobile app, which is much easier than having to do it on the unit itself. Of course, this system works with up to four devices at the same time, including two actual receivers if you have them, with the ability to use a single receiver at the same time as mobile devices. You should be able to buy an additional receiver by itself for about 60% of the entire package price if you do want to get one more. The flexibility of different setups that you can get with that has always been a strong point of the Mars lineup. The new 400 Pro maintains the 400 foot line of sight range as the 400 and 400 S, and it also inherits the HDMI and SDI connections from the S version, that means you get one HDMI in and one SDI in, but no loop out on the transmitter. But you do get both HDMI and SDI outputs on the receiver. This will cross convert that as well. So if you use HDMI in on the transmitter and you want SDI output from the receiver, you're good to go. You do also get that same locking DC in connection for external power. And this does come with a cable to power one of the units from the wall, just like the others in the 400 family. On the back, you do also have a USB-C connection and you can also use that for power if you do have the right power delivery device. So what's really new and drastically different is the actual physical design as you can see and you've no doubt noticed by now. Instead of a vertical orientation like the original 400 and 400S, the 400 Pro is now wider than it is tall, basically as if it was turned on its side. To go along with that new design, you've now got a very solid and very low profile built-in shoe mount and together with the new body shape, this really helps to keep this fairly compact, even on top of a relatively small camera. The tall transmitters that we had until now always honestly felt a little bit awkward and top heavy on handheld rigs on small cameras to me, but this new design fits in much better and it feels like it belongs there in my opinion. I used to just mount the 400S flat with the front side screw thread adapter, but then the screen was blocked and it could also get in the way if you were trying to use the viewfinder in the back of the camera. On the 400 Pro, you've got a screen on the front, you've got the HDMI and battery port as well as that USB-C connection and a power button, not a switch, a button on the back. That's also new for Hollyland. You've got the DC connection down on the bottom in the back as well, and you've got the SDI coming out of the side. Because of the shape of the body, that SDI connection is also a little bit protected, which is nice. Generally, I do like this new style of body, uh, but there are certain ways that you'll be limited because of it. Uh, for example, mounting it flat against the side of a rig or on the back of a director's monitor cage will not be as easy because of the location of some of these ports on the back here or the horizontal orientation or some combination of the two. The only screw thread is on the bottom of that cold shoe and there's no front side adapter included like there was with the original 400 and 400 S. It simply doesn't fit on the back of something like the Feel World F5 Pro monitor, for example, because of the direction of the antenna when this is sideways to mount on there. And there may be other limitations as well. For straightforward use on top of a camera though, I do very much like this design and I honestly prefer it over the original, but do choose carefully between this and the original 400S, depending on how you plan to rig it. And even consider the 300 Pro if you don't need SDI since it is actually newer. Now the last difference that I want to address here is the fan. Some people complained that the Mars 400 and 400S fans were too loud to use on a set where audio was critical. I generally didn't have any major problems with my own kit, but I do feel that the 400 Pro has been upgraded. There are fans, but you can control them, including turning them completely off, and they are noticeably quieter even when they're on.
So like I said, I've been using this around the studio for the past month or two and I haven't had any issues at all. Battery life seems pretty good. I got a couple of hours out of the smallest sized NPF battery and while they did get pretty hot to the touch, I believe that that's something that will be improved in the final production units as well. As far as distance tests, I'll be fully honest, I have just not had time to go out and set up multiple cameras by myself to do that sort of thing, just between life and weather and scheduling. I just know that I've never been let down by a Holly Land kit in the past when I have tested them and I don't expect that to change now. Plus, I know that pretty much every other review will have the obligatory walking away from the camera to show that it works clip included anyway. Environment, interference, obstacles, and other conditions will be different in every situation as well. I like how close and solidly it fits to the camera body when I'm using a slider or handheld, so it doesn't affect the stability whatsoever. My only complaint is that once again, it doesn't come with a carry case. I have been using this cheap hard shell case that I got from Amazon with the foam from the actual inside of the original box with my 400S since I got it though, so I'll probably do the same thing once again. The 400 Pro will be priced at $649, which is just $80 more than the original 400S. And I think the biggest deciding factor between the two will be the new form factor, physically speaking. I really like it for on-camera use, and in my opinion, that's kind of what it's made for. If you're pulling focus off of this, the slight update in latency might be worth it as well, but I don't think it will make much of a difference for practical use. But for now, if you have any other questions or comments, please do let me know down below and I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as I can. Otherwise, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, share, all that good stuff, and I'll see you next time.